Hi, and welcome back. I'm Amy Sonneman, and in the last few videos, I showed you tone-on-tone -tone stamping and, and all of the things that kind of allow you to use your stencils in a different way. But as I was getting ready for this video, there are a few kind of different techniques that I learned and that I played with that I'd like to share with you. So this segment is going to be more about the randomness and how to kind of think outside of the box, some of the new things that are on the market that we tested that work beautifully to give you even more options. So hang in there, we'll give you some, some fun things to try. The first thing that I would like to show you is using your embossing ink on a colored piece of paper to create a different effect. So first we're gonna take our tool, our blending tool. This is the domed blending tool with the new scrapbook.com embossing ink. And we're gonna just kind of give it a really good coating of embossing powder over the stencil. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to emboss with any kind, you can do any color, you can do clear, and I'm gonna do it in, I'm not doing the whole back so you can see the difference of what it looks like embossed and not embossed. So we're gonna, we taped it all down, we're gonna lift it up, we're gonna remove the stencil. You can also do this with um, Versamark, like a watermark ink, and it will dry and you'll see all of the beautiful textures kind of like this. This is a Versamark ink where it dries and it looks like a watermark. Next, we're gonna bring in the Ranger Clear Embossing Powder. This is the super fine detail. You can see where we have the embossing ink. We're going to just kind of dump a nice, healthy chunk of embossing powder on our paper. It's gonna to stick to where we used the embossing ink through the stencil, and you can kind of see it before it's heated. Now we're gonna set everything aside and I'm gonna show you this new tool that I found that is totally revolutionized how I emboss at home. This is the best tool that I've ever found for embossing. I am the embosser when I have all of my stuff all over the table when I'm working. And when I go to emboss, I dump my embossing powder on my thing, I put my stuff away, and then I pull out my heat tool and I heat and then I set it down and then the cord falls, you know, it falls off the table onto my carpet. It's just kind of a, a hassle and a mess. So I find myself not doing it as much as I should because I love the effect. I just hate the, all of the stuff that goes with it. Well, this kind of made everything super easy. This is from Totally Tiffany and it helps you emboss super easily every time. You don't burn your fingers. There's places for everything, super well thought out. So if I'm doing a bunch of cards at once, say I wanted to do this six times, I put my embossing powder on top. There are these really nice slots on the side that you can stage all of the things. Let me turn it this way a little bit so you can see maybe a little bit better. So that you have slots that you can put all of your projects as you're waiting. So you can kind of stage them in this area and heat them one at a time. That's the first tool or the first tip. There's also this kind of looks like a cutting board or a paddle. What that is intended to do is to clip your embossing project onto this paddle. It takes your fingers away from the heat source and allows you to rotate and turn without getting your fingers in the way. Love that idea because I'm notoriously get my fingers just a tad bit too close. So this helps out tremendously. There is a tool, like everyone has different types of tools, heat tools. I have one that's, you know, short and squatty and there's an adapter. So my short and squatty one fits in here without an adapter, but the skinny, long skinny one needs an adapter, otherwise it goes all the way through. So the adapter is included. You just put your adapter down and put your tool on top. You get your cords out of the way, so you'll never have your hot tool falling down on your leg or on your carpet. It won't burn your carpet because it stays in place. So you've got your cord management here, hooks to your power source at the bottom. There's a little tray here to hold your embossing kind of priming bag, your little powder tool. And 
then there's a slot when you're done with this piece to put it back. So when you go to store it, you take this stuff off, you put it back in your cabinet, and you're ready to go for the next time. Let's go ahead and heat this project and see how easy it is. So we're gonna heat it up. You always heat your tool a little bit to make sure it's nice and warm before you take it to your project. So we're gonna give it a couple seconds to get heated. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring in our tool, or our paper, to the tool, and we're gonna slowly rotate. You can see it starting to melt. That's the best part of the whole thing, the whole melting process. See how beautiful that is? My fingers are nowhere near the heat source. I can shift it, I can move it. I can bring it in from this way if I wanna get this side. Still, my hands are nowhere near the heat source. Let's move this aside and show you how it looks. This totally, the clip comes off. You store your board there, and that is just a clear embossing ink on any color paper would give you a tone on tone effect, just like we got with the matching ink and paper. But this is with embossing powder. Isn't that beautiful? Kind of gives you a little raised effect, a little depth and I didn't burn my hands in the process, which is good. If you're like me, I love sparkle paper. I love glitter paper, but I don't like when the glitter comes off all over everything. And I love the alcohol ink cardstock from Tim Holtz that has the silver sparkle like this. One of the things as I was playing, we get questions often on our site and we try to answer them and sometimes you throw us a curveball, and we can't answer them right away. So we go and we test the product to see if we can give you a good answer or not. And people were asking, I want to use my inks, my regular inks on sparkle paper or glitter paper. Well, I thought, well, let's try it. We'll see what works. We'll see what doesn't. And I realized in testing that our hybrid inks work beautifully on the glitter sparkle paper. And you know me, I love the rainbow. So I went in with my daubers on the circle and I daubered the rainbow. And look at how beautiful that looks. You could use it for backgrounds, you could use it for party invitations, anything you can think of to do with glitter paper. This was the stripe stencil. I did the same thing. I took one of the domed blender tools and I inked the rainbow along the way, all the way down. The other inks that people were trying and the question we got was nothing dries, it still wipes off. Well, the trick to that is two things. The hybrid ink dries faster and it's still, you're still gonna have to let it sit for a little bit, but once you let it sit, like I did this, and if you do it right away and you put your thumb on it, it the ink will come off. But if you let it sit for two or three hours and then come back, it's there. It does not come off. You can do anything to it and it stays beautifully. The other thing you can do is take the, the embossing buddy from Totally Tiffany and you can heat set it. It does dry it faster, but you're still gonna wanna let it sit for a little bit longer to let it like seep into the material itself because it sits on top and it needs that time to kind of cure. So that was one of the things that I learned just by testing that you can make your own glitter paper with any stencil you want. You know, dig into your stash and test the different things with the hybrid inks and see what you can come up with. And feel free to share. We would love, if you try something new, leave us a comment and say, oh, I really love that technique or I tried that technique and it didn't work. Do you have any suggestions? We're up, we answer questions all the time. So if you have a question, leave it in the comments below. I'd be happy to help. I got the pleasure a few weeks ago of testing our new stencils that we came out with in the last few weeks. And I tried them with the new foil quill. And this is the freestyle foil quill. And I thought, will they work? Will they burn the stencil? You know, it might not even work at all. So I thought, well, while I'm playing, I'm just gonna go ahead and try it. So I took the foil quill 
and we have to heat up the, the tool. And this is the starter set, and there are three different tips inside. We have a small, a medium, and a large tip. We're going to go with the medium tip to start, and they are all USB, so to get the power to them, you have to hook them up to a USB, either a charger or your plug into the wall. I actually have a charger, and We Are Memory Keepers makes a charger. I did not have that at the time, so I brought mine from home. So I'm going to plug it into my charger. It takes a few minutes to warm up, so I would say three to five minutes. Let it warm up nice and hot. And these are two of the pieces that just playing around, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a total game changer. This was the circle template, and I just traced the outside of each of the circles to get this beautiful background, and it's in gold. And then I took the Moroccan tile, and I traced around the outside. And then I took a smaller, this was the medium tip, and then I took the fine tip, and I just went in and kind of scratched along the edges to give this dimension. And I absolutely loved the way it looked. So you could do that on a colored paper. You could do it on, you know, whatever you want. The trick is to go slow. You don't want to rush. You don't just want to take your time, but you don't want to stop and leave it on any one piece of your stencil because it could burn. I didn't have any burning experiences. I didn't have any melting. But I would just give each of your stencils, because they're all made out of something maybe a little different, Test it first on the outside edge to make sure that it does not do any harm to your, your stencils. But the scrapbook.com stencils are the ones I used and tested, and they worked beautifully. So I highly recommend you trying the stencils you have at home if you purchased the Foil Quill Freestyle. So let's take a look. Let's get set up to try a few things. As you can see on my Make Art Station, as I was playing, it will adhere onto your Make Art Station. So make sure you put down something on top, either another piece of paper or, or the Tim Holtz mat, so that you're not ruining your make art station. So I'm going to put my tape on the back of my piece of cardstock. I'm going to cut a piece of rose gold foil, and this comes are three piece or three different types of foil that come in the set. Let me show you that. There's a gold a silver, and then the rose gold. So you have things to try as soon as you get it out of the box. We're going to put the foil down next. And you want to make the foil, make sure the foil is flat, because if it gets bubbled, it might not be as smooth as what you'd like at the end. So we're going to kind of smooth it all out. As you notice, the edges are taped. The foil is taped down, and we want that. Next, we're going to turn our little card or our little stencil on the card so that our rain is kind of coming down at an angle. We're going to tape it again because we don't want it to move until we're done. So we have our stencil in place with the foil sandwiched in between the paper on the bottom. So here's the paper, here's the foil, and then the stencil is on top. The foil quill has been heating up for three to five minutes. And you can always test it on something before you take it to your finished project. So just slide a piece under the scrap edge and just test it and see if it's, yeah, it looks perfect. Just test it to see that it comes out. Then we're going to take it to our stencil. Now, the one thing, make sure you put your magnets back on so you don't have everything moving around like I did. So I'm going to take my foil quill, and I'm just going to go in each of those little raindrops. And this is the medium. And those small ones, I might want the teeny tiny one. But you can outline it, or you can kind of try and fill it in. You could have used silver or gold. Any foil that you have on hand that is that uses heat to transfer will work with the foil quill. The stuff that is glue based that you have to use adhesive for, that won't work with the foil quill. But I had so much fun just kind of playing and testing and so forth. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much fun and very therapeutic, I must say. This one took quite a while. 
but it was so fun. It, it literally did because I traced every single one and then I went back in and did the scratch marks. This one didn't take as long. I just kind of went ahead and did the circles quickly and I just kind of follow the outside. I don't necessarily care that it's filled in in the middle and something this small, you might not be able to get a perfect raindrop every time and I'm okay with that. I'm just playing and testing and you know, sometimes the best things come out of mistakes along the way. And that's kind of what happened here. It's like, ooh, I just got the foil quill. I'm going to test it. And then I found this and went, oh, man, that's a game changer. So I'm going to do a few more. If you have stencils that you want to trace, I'll show you this on the clouds. All you're going to do is just slowly trace around the outside edge of the clouds. don't want to go too fast because it might not adhere as well as you'd like. So much fun. I mean, think of all the stencils you might have in your collection that you could use this with. I need more time to play is what I need because I didn't want to stop. Just be cautious as to where your, the edge of your paper is so that you're not going on, you know, you don't want to do it without any protection and have foil on your table or whatever. So think twice before you take it to paper and make sure that your table is protected underneath. Okay, so let's check it out and see what we've got. Now that is hot, the tip is hot, be sure you don't touch it because it will burn you. All right, so we're gonna lift up the stencil. We're going to lift up the foil. And look how pretty this, oh, those turned out so cute. This is where I traced the, the clouds. And this was the medium. You could have went in with a small tip and that would have been great. But look at the little raindrops. Isn't that cute? You could put raindrops over the top of anything. Now, the adhesive will pull off some of the foil. That's fine. You just don't want it to move but look how beautiful. So check out your stencil stash and see what you might, if you purchase the foil quill, definitely give it a try. Throughout the year, we get a lot of questions. And since we're talking about blending tools, some of the questions that we got along the way are what kinds of sponge works on this tip or that kind of tool. So I'm gonna kind of run through the different tips and the different sponges and what fits on which tool because sometimes you have one tool but you like a different feel you know we're going to kind of go through the whole process the first one is the Sizzix tool and it has the same hook and loop same way it goes on like the rest let's check to see that it fits on all of the others that are like it so this is the nouveau It's a little bit bigger, but it does fit. Okay, so that was the Nouveau. This is the Tim Holtz blending tool. Fits there as well. Okay, this is the domed tool from scrapbook.com. Fits on there as well. Okay, now we're going to test the Nouveau on all of them. So this is the one that comes from the Nouveau blending tool. Okay. So let's test it on the Sizzix tool. It's a little bit smaller, but it definitely works. You might get an edge if you push too hard because it's a, the sponge is a little bit smaller than the platform. Let's try it on the Tim Holtz tool. Same thing, it's a little bit smaller, but it works, sticks on perfectly. You might get a little bit of an edge if you press too hard. This is the scrapbook.com one. Fits the size, seems to fit the same. It sticks on nicely. So the Nouveau foam fits on all four options. This is the Tim Holtz blending tool. This is the standard that's been on the market for years and years. Fits on there nicely. Let's try it on the Sizzix. It's a little bit bigger than the Sizzix one. So you won't, if you push too hard, you won't get that edge. 
So it's a little bit bigger on the Sizzix tool. It sticks really nicely. The Nouveau tool, it's a little bit bigger as well. You won't get the edge, but it sticks fine. On the scrapbook.com tool, it's a little bit bigger as well, but it sticks nicely. Okay. The fourth one is the domed blending tool. So it's a domed foam, so it's not flat like the others. It's domed as well. That comes with the scrapbook.com blending tool. So I know you're gonna ask, does it fit on some of these other tools? Let's test it out. This is the Sizzix tool. Fits beautifully. This is the Nouveau blending tool. Fits beautifully. It's nice and wide so that if you push too hard, you're never gonna get an edge. This is the Tim Holtz tool. Fits beautifully. And then of course it fits on the dome to blending tool. So those are the, the four main ones on the market right now. So I wanted to make sure that you saw that all of the tips work on all of the different styles so that what you have in your stash, you can mix and match and get the most out of your blending tool. After you've spent the day playing with your stencils and doing all the fun things, you also have to know how to care and, and clean your stencils. We didn't talk much about mixed media and pastes and that sort of thing, but I wanted to do a quick cleaning and care taking of your stencils so that you don't ruin them. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of paste on a stencil and I'm gonna show you kind of what to do and what not to do. This is Nouveau Embellishment Mousse, and I love their new spatulas. They're like foam and squishy, kind of like a kitchen spatula. And what's nice about the spatula is that it's flexible, so it goes on. I have a hard time with the ones that are metal, because I feel like I scrape half of what I'm putting on off again. So with this, it allows you to put a nice even coat, and there's not a whole lot of extra left behind and you're not scraping the pieces. Okay, so say we've got our embellishment mousse, but you have tools that are now messy. We're gonna always put the top back on the embellishment mousse and we're gonna, I leave this metal paper on top because it's gonna keep your mousse nice and moist. So definitely do that. We're gonna lift off the stencil gently and the embellishment mousse looks so pretty on the paper, but we have a dirty stencil. So we're gonna set this aside to dry, but we need to clean off our tools because if you don't clean your tools, you're gonna to have to replace them more often. First thing you can do is use just good old baby wipes, especially if you're in your room and you don't have a sink at hand and you wanna do three or four of these at once with different colors, you can easily just clean it with a baby wipe. Same with the spatula, just kind of clean it with the baby wipe. But if you don't, you know, if, if you don't get it all off, make sure you clean your mat as well, because it will stick to the mat. Clean it all off, set it aside to dry. Make sure you do the front and the back. But if you can't, if you don't get all of it off and you want to continue on with another project, you don't want to just set it aside and let it dry. Because if you let it dry, it will stay and you're not gonna be able to get it off and you've ruined your stencil. So what I do is I take either I wet paper towels or I take a few baby wipes and I, I wouldn't leave these for hours, but you can leave it for a half an hour or 20 minutes and I just cover them with a the baby oil and keep them wet. As long as they're wet, that product won't dry on top of your stencil. So. I put it on both sides if you need it. And then I stick it inside of just a Ziploc bag. And I kind of smooth it down to make sure that it stays nice and wet. And then I seal it. And then I set it aside because my first reaction was to have a thing of water next to me so that I could rub it off, but let's face it, I'm gonna knock that thing over and it's gonna get all over my table and my projects and I'm gonna be frustrated. 
this is kind of another way to get you even 10 minutes into your project before you have to rush to the sink to clean it off. So baby wipes, a plastic bag works perfectly. So say you're done with your project and you have your stencil inside of your plastic bag. Now it's time to go and clean it off for the day and make sure that there's nothing left on it. You're gonna take it out of the bag and you're gonna go and run it under warm water, warm, even hot water. Because some of the pastes get really sticky, so it might take hot water to get it off. So you're just gonna run it under hot water and you're just gonna take either a baby wipe and gently rub like this, or you're just gonna leave it and run it under the hot water and get it nice and warm and then it kind of just flows off on its own. What you don't want to do, especially with fragile and very detailed stencils, you don't want to scrub. If you scrub, you're going to pull up those little pieces. If there were letters or words in your stencil, you're going to pull them up and bend them and your stencil will be ruined. So set it in the bottom of your sink and just kind of dab. You don't want to rub, you don't want to go ham in the paint style, you just kind of want to dab. And as that hot water is running over the top of your stencil, you're just going to kind of get the big chunky pieces off and that prolongs the life of your stencil. So hopefully that gives you some tips. All the things you can do with your stencils from how to use them, how to keep them stuck down to your paper, to how to clean them. So hopefully you have lots of things to play with and to try, and I hope you have as much fun as I did playing with all the fun things that you can do with stencils. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happiness is life handmade.